All right, so we have our Raspberry Pi set up, USB hubs plugged in, the miners are plugged in, the Raspberry Pi is powered on, USB hubs are on, and it is connected to the internet. You will next go to IP Scanner, Advanced IP Scanner is the name of the program. This will scan our entire local area network for every device connected to it. That is the easiest way to find your Raspberry Pi if it is just randomly assigning IP addresses to it. Everything on your network will show up in here, uh, you know, uh, gaming consoles, wireless devices, uh, iPhones, things like that, wireless printers. I already pretty much know what everything is, like I know what my amp miners are, but anything with an arrow next to it is something that you can log in via your web browser, and I actually already know this guy is Minera, and I get confirmation by that because it says, Welcome to Minera. It has a default username and password, which are both Minera. So we are now in the graphic user interface of Minera. Um, nothing is running. This is a totally fresh system. Uh, top right is your, you know, your little widgets. It's got your Bitcoin price, your time. We need to set up a custom miner to run our Gecko Science USB sticks. So I have actually gone and compiled the code for that. I will be posting this, and this is pretty easy. You are essentially just going to copy and paste this line by line and put it into the terminal. So keep that open, pop back into Minera, and in the bottom left of the dashboard, you have System, and then you can open the terminal. And again, it will prompt us for our username and password, which are both Minera. And now we are logged into the command line interface so we can start getting this built. So essentially all we're doing is creating a new directory for this miner. So when Minera boots, it will recognize these sticks. And this is all code that was uh, has been written by the people that developed this project. So this is definitely better than fooling around trying to compile code yourself. We just made the directories for those folders, and now we're actually going to tell the program to go find the files that we want. So it is just essentially visiting the GitHub page and compiling this miner onto our Minera system. This guy shouldn't take too long. Some of the other ones take longer. But essentially, after each one finishes, you just copy the next line of code. I am just using Control-C for copy and Control-V for paste. In the terminal window, you need to right-click and go to Paste from Browser. So this is the big one here. This is actually compiling the software specific to our Gecko sticks. And this is actually backwards compatible with the old ones. So this works for the original single chip and the two-pack double chip. This one takes a bit to write up. Um, something else that might help you guys out if you just type in Gecko Science. I already have it saved up here, but we want the Gecko Science 2 pack BM1384 official support thread. These are the guys that made it. So um, essentially, it's just a bunch of pictures, uh, how you can get them. You can load it on Windows, build it on Linux. It has all that set up here. Uh, the code that I'm giving you is not on here. I might have posted it on page three. I cannot remember. But some good information here is voltage. It's really important that you have a high powered hub because from this chart you can see the kind of voltage that these guys are able to suck out. So you got to make sure that you have the voltage to run these guys or you're going to have one stick working and the other ones won't be getting any power. So back in my Nara, we should be getting close. Another interesting thing, I don't know if I should add this in, I suppose we're just waiting, there's something called iBoot, and they actually make 
some of the best uh, USB hubs in terms of uh, you can actually get just a hub made for USB mining and you just plug it into your typical computer power supply and it's got 49 ports and can run basically anything I think these guys are kinda expensive like 200 bucks that's uh, a fair amount of money essentially so um, yeah but those actually are awesome I highly recommend it so back to my Nera we have completely compiled the gecko sticks now we are going to make this essentially put it into my Nera as its own custom A little little bit slow but it is doing a lot of work and I'll just go ahead and grab this guy while we're at it I might not have executed this command there we go my bad so as you can see we are lucky that someone else did all of this work because <laughs> it was probably a load of work to do. I can't help it. I got to check. I always am checking. Yeah, we're riding about 1200 bucks on the coin. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So I have already compiled the next line, so we're just going to paste it in here. So this is just creating a new custom miner inside my Nara, And this will copy that directory into the custom miner folder. So from here, execute it. We're good. We have officially compiled a custom miner. So we just type exit into the command line. We will completely close out the terminal. Then we are back in my Nara and we'll have a custom miner. I recommend refreshing the browser to make sure it's there. And it will come up. Another thing, as you can see in the bottom line, these are very standard overclocking frequencies that a normal well-powered USB hub can handle. So these are the parameters that I recommend using. If you have trouble, go lower. The first one is for the first uh, compact stick with one chip, and the second is the two-pack, which has two chips. So you can definitely clock them lower. I recommend going down by increments of 25. So go down to 175, 125, 150, 100, if you are having trouble getting all your sticks power. So from here, we are going into settings in the left-hand chart of my Nara, and we are going to set up custom, uh, let's set up pools. That's always a good place. There is a default donation pool. I keep that up, and I mine for uh, the developer for an hour a day, but let's just kick that, and I'm just going to go with uh, Ant Pool because it's saved in my browser. We'll just keep my mining peon name and below it it says custom miners and it says that a custom miner has been found this is what we just coded into the program we click on and then below it in local miner settings we will select the miner that we want uh, we may have to re we save it And then in local minor settings, we see that we have a custom miner that we can select. And we select that. And then down here is where we enter the frequency code. And essentially when it boots, this will tell the sticks to hash at that specific frequency. So um, I like to enable these uh, auto restart in case it goes off, auto recover. If anything goes wrong, it just reboots. And then super user essentially gives you root access to everything, so you'll be good. I click save, and then below this box, it gives us a little run up of what it will be booting when it starts. And it shows, you know, our IP that we log into 
the miner that we're using and then the pool and then our worker's name and then the password I just left it blank this network miners is where you would add your amp miners and things of that nature and then you can change your password time zone um, I wish I was in Rome but unfortunately I'm not so from here we just save and restart So right now the miner is booting back up and it typically takes about five minutes for it to compile accurate data because the miners go up and down in terms of hashing rate. So in the far left in the dashboard, we're just going to go to our local miner. And it takes a minute. We can see that uh, it's working. If you scroll down to the real-time miner log and hit the play button it tells you what it's doing so it is essentially going through the pools and it has to lower the network difficulty because uh, we're not running in tera hashes we're running in giga hashes so it takes a minute for it to get to the right difficulty level um, you can see that the stratum from our pool has already found us a block to be working on, but it has not put us to the right difficulty level. So it takes about five minutes for this information to uh, start popping up, but then you'll have a data table and your average hash rate and your rejected rates and things like that. You can calculate your earnings and whatnot. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So it looks like we're getting somewhere, but... Essentially, it's building us up our charts of uh, how much work we're doing. But essentially, this is how you set up Minera. You're good to go. Everything's running. And now we're going to go check on our system. Let's see what we got.